Well, in this lesson, we'll discuss the important role of expected values for characterizing random variables, and as a special case, we'll show how the moment generating function is used to derive moments of arbitrary integer order. Well, let's start with the probability density for a Rayleigh random variable, which is an important density that is used to model signal values in radar and communications. The range for this random variable is the non-negative numbers, and its shape is parameterized by a variable I've called A here. Now, by using this example, we can illustrate a few of the common ways that probability densities are characterized in general. One of those ways is by specifying the place at which the density attains its largest value. Now, for some densities, there will be several places that this happens, but for this particular density, it only happens in one place, which happens to be when x is equal to the parameter a. Now, this is called the mode for a probability density. Another way a density is characterized is by specifying the place at which half of the probability is on either side. This is called the median, and for this Rayleigh density, the median is roughly 1.18 times the parameter a. Well, another way is to specify the mean or the expected value for the random variable, which is evaluated by, of course, integrating the product of the probability density with all of the values in its range. Now, for the Rayleigh density, the mean is roughly 1.25 times the parameter a, and as we've seen, the mean the median and the mode are all different values for this particular density function. Now for some density functions, they'll all be the same values, but as this example shows, they don't have to be. Another characterization for a random variable is its second moment, which is the average of the square of the random variable. Now, As we did with discrete random variables, we'll use the first and second moments to define the variance and the standard deviation for a random variable, and among the ways that we will characterize random variables and their densities, the first and second moments, along with the corresponding variance and standard deviation, will be the most important. Now, in general, the expected value for any function of a random variable is computed by integrating the product of the density function and all of the values the function takes over the random variable's range. As an example, suppose we wanted to determine the expected value for some function of the random variable x, which was the square root of the, ran of the Rayleigh random variable. Now, using Mathematica, we could define the density for which Mathematica has a special function to do just that, and then perform the required integral of the square root of x times the density. And that would produce a result of 2 to the 1 fourth times the gamma function evaluated at 5 fourths times the square root of a, the parameter. Now a more empirical approach could be to simulate a million realizations of a Rayleigh random variable and then compute the arithmetic mean of their square roots. Now here's some code using the computational tool MATLAB to do that. And this uses the MATLAB function Rayleigh Rand, which is part of their statistics and machine learning toolbox. Well, Mathematica and MATLAB are, of course, only two of many possible software tools you could use to analyze probability problems, but the general approach I've illustrated with these tools will work with other tools, too. Now, after using this empirical approach, we can compare the results with the analytic result we predicted with Mathematica and see that we do indeed get close agreement. Now, whereas the analytical approach is preferred when possible, empirical approaches can be helpful for confirming the results and for deriving results in situations for which the analytical solutions are difficult to derive. Well, another expected value that is important for random variables is, is an exponential with an exponent that is the random variable times some parameter s. Now, you might notice that this integral looks similar to the Laplace transform that's often used in the study of differential equations. For reasons we'll soon see, this particular expected value is called the moment generating function for a probability density function. And to see this, let's differentiate both sides of this equation with respect to the parameter s. Now on the right hand side, we'll see that this differentiation drops the x down into the integral. And then if we look at these equations when s is set equal to zero, 
we see that the first derivative of the moment generating function when the parameter s is set to zero is equal to the expected value or the first moment for the random variable. Likewise, we could take another derivative which would bring from the exponent another factor of x into the integral. And if we evaluate this one, when s is equal to zero, we'd get the second moment for the random variable. In general then, when we evaluate the nth derivative of the moment generating function with s equal to zero, we get the nth moment for the random variable. Now this can be a convenient way to obtain all of the integer moments with only performing one integration to compute the original moment generating function. Now as an example, let's use an exponential density function with a mean parameter mu. The moment generating function, which we'll call m sub x, is the integral of e to the sx times the density, for which we can gather all the terms that multiply x up into the exponent. And if we reorganize that exponent, we'll see that this integral will only converge when the real part of s times mu is less than 1, so that we'll have a, the real part of the exponent would be negative. Now because we'll be interested in evaluating this when s equals 0, we'll be fine. But if we were to use the moment generating function for some other situation, then we'd need to be sure that s satisfied this condition. Now provided that the condition is satisfied, the moment generating function will evaluate to 1 over 1 minus s times mu. And now we can consider derivatives of this function. The first derivative is mu over 1 minus s to the mu quantity squared, so that when we set s equal to 0, as expected, the expected value will be equal to mu. The second derivative is 2 times mu squared over 1 minus s times mu quantity cubed, so we set that equal to s equal to 0, we'll get the second moment as 2 times mu squared. The third derivative is 3 times 2 times mu to the third over 1 minus s times mu quantity to the fourth. If we evaluate that when s is equal to 0, we'll get that the third moment is 3 factorial times mu to the third. In general, the nth derivative will be n factorial times mu raised to the power n over 1 minus s times mu quantity raised to the n plus 1. So if we set s equal to 0, we get that the nth integer moment for the random variable x is n factorial times mu raised to the n. Well, in summary, the expected value for any function of a random variable is obtained by integrating the product of the probability density function with the function evaluated at all of the values in the range for the random variable. Now this is the way we evaluate the important first and second moments for a random variable, and, and we've introduced another important expectation called a moment generating function that can be helpful for finding moments of an arbitrary order.